हेलो यस मैम जस्ट गिव मी अ मिनट very good morning to all venkatesh sir am i audible it is audible yes sir a very good morning to all the students who are eager interested uh, to listen to the speaker today uh, it give me immense pleasure to introduce uh, the speaker today uh, expert in uh, digital marketing and uh, she is uh, mrs sneha ravindra kanade she is a certified digital marketing professional she has completed advanced certification in management from aima new delhi she has corporate experience of 3 years in international market research domain she is keenly interested in research and is currently pursuing phd in marketing she has completed postgraduate studies in yoga and naturopathy 
Her areas of interest are mnemonics and calligraphy. She is a life member of Management Teachers Consortium and she is Six Sigma Belt certified. She has conducted certification program in digital marketing and she has presented research papers in the international conferences on human resources and marketing. She has participated in various international conferences on data analytics and research methodology and has more than 35 research papers to her credit. She has also published research papers in Scopus indexed journals and book publications to her credit. She has professional expertise in specializations of digital marketing, social media marketing, e-consumer behavior, recruitment, marketing research, etc. She is also associated with Art of Living, Kindness Champions as volunteer, and is an avid reader. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce the speaker to you and I will be pleased if Madam can add a few lines on what makes them happy in their life, because that is what is the lesson I have learned from you. So with this note, I will uh, hand over the session to you, uh, Professor Sneha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that uh, uh, humbling introduction. And uh, to start with, uh, what uh, makes uh, you know us happy is always follow your passion. Whatever you like doing, do it. Uh, don't give it a thought at times too many times because when uh, you hear from many people others opinions it tends to get uh, you know your own thoughts tend to get biased so it's better that whenever you feel like you know pursuing something something which is your passion maybe anything you, you might like singing you might like dancing uh, or anything of that sort just do it you know that that is going to make you and one very important thing which will always make you happy is uh, the art of giving. So whatever you have with you, share it with others. And trust me, it is it is absolutely uh, very contagious, you know, that happiness is so contagious when you have something with you and you share it with others. It's, it's really beautiful. So on that note, um, I would like to first of all, thank uh, Sanskriti Group, uh, Dr. Bala Koteshwari, ma'am, other faculty members of the department for giving me an opportunity to share whatever little I know about digital marketing with the students. And uh, in, in a way, I'm actually thankful to COVID because, uh, because of COVID, I'm able to connect to a different part of India. Uh, otherwise, it was mostly like we, we had to go physically at some place and you know have lectures and so on. So uh, that, that is one very positive aspect about COVID that we are able to connect to each other so easily. So without uh, uh, much delay, Give me a moment. I will quickly uh, share my presentation with all of you all. Yeah, so a hearty welcome to all the students, faculty members uh, of, of uh, Sanskriti Group of Institutions. So uh, today we are going to discuss about digital marketing, a topic that probably everybody is talking about, and uh, we'll be mainly uh, trying. We'll mainly try to focus on it from a student perspective, because uh, I'm sure many of you would be looking forward to make a career into it. Okay. So before we start with digital marketing formally, let me tell you why is it a buzzword today, and why people are looking at it as a very important employment opportunity. Uh, many of you might be studying economics and you have studied the principle of demand and supply, right? So always remember when the demand is high and the supply is on the lower side. So obviously that particular entity is going to be more in demand. So as of now, uh, there is quite a lot of demand of digital marketeers. And that is why uh, this is one profession which is quite highly paid. And uh, I'm also going to share with you in this particular journey of digital marketing uh, for next 45 minutes to one hour that what exactly are the skill sets required at this particular point of time and how can you develop it so that getting into digital marketing domain becomes very easy undoubtedly it is one of the most lucrative careers today why is it a lucrative career what are the different dimensions of it is all we are going to see today so um, to start with probably what digital marketing is, all of you are aware what marketing is. 
marketing if i probably have to tell you in very simple words you know trying to get a little bit away from our philip kotler so basically marketing is all about creating awareness and of course inquisitiveness in the minds of the consumers what this product is all about is it right for me should i buy this product and obviously convincing them that this is the right product or service for them so that is marketing now all of this when you do it through a digital platform it is known as digital marketing but at the end of the day we are looking at uh, you know trying to give information about a product or service and trying to tell people how best fit it is for them so this is basically digital marketing if i had to tell you in very very simple words so we are going to disseminate as much as information as possible through an online platform all right now um all of you i'm sure on on the um, on the uh, right hand side you can see the small brown color structure with a uh, red tentacles on it right so all of you are aware what this is this is our dear covid 19 right we are going to celebrate its birthday very soon in march so one year will be over for the lockdown and so on situation so uh, this is our covid 19 now this particular uh, element has actually gave given lot of momentum to digital marketing digital marketing was never so prosperous as it has become in the covid 19 season so uh, what this has done to us first of all in the covid 19 season one thing that all of us are very convinced with is life is going nowhere without digital equipments life is going nowhere without digital skills it has become a must for everybody so we had a slight tinge of it when uh, there was demonetization wherein all the small players all the small businesses they started adopting paytm and all other kinds of medium of payment so that is again a part of digital skills so at that point of time we had uh, the a taste of digital marketing as well at that uh, at that particular juncture so um, this particular little covid has uh, made us you know shift our focus from normal skills to the digital skills so uh, a key today is all of you all the students out here who are listening to me make sure that you become tech savvy you cannot survive in any of the jobs if you are not tech savvy to be honest so uh, when i say tech savvy what do i mean by it if there's a new technology that has come up so try to explore it don't run away from it explore it then uh, try to use it uh, there are many a times you know people who say that um, i i don't need paytm as of now i have my cash right so or or i don't need to be on social media as of now um i i will try something offline and so on so there are many such kind of uh, no answers we listen in day to day life but trust me in case if you really want to run a marathon when i say a marathon it is absolute lifelong employment that i'm talking about we are not here to explore sprints small 10 100 meters and 200 meters and 800 meters no we are here to talk about the marathons somebody who runs for quite some distance so for that always remember you have to be techno savvy there is no other excuse to it then of course um talking about being techno savvy so um in in this particular pandemic specifically which has taught us a lot a lot about uh, digital skills also see what as a customer i expect and what i see online so uh, that has to match somewhere as in um if probably i if i have to give you an example many of you do online shopping these days so the description what you see of the product that has to exactly match with the product so then you 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 are satisfied as a customer you are actually very happy as a customer right so that is what we exactly mean by it that what i as a customer i'm searching online so uh i i should be able to see what i want to see as a customer and that is your job now one thing uh before uh, we get into the strategies that company have been adopting as part of digital marketing 
there is a one very cliche statement very uh, very uh, i would say normal statement that all the faculty members they make uh, especially when they are teaching marketing subject which is customer is the king right recently when um, uh, there was there was an event at i am bangalore online event and there was uh, mr arpan sen gupta who is uh, the managing director of icici lombard so he is also he happens to be an alumni of i am i am bangalore and in his speech as well he said the same thing customer is a king we all tend to hear this we all tend to see it but when he has reached to the position of ceo he is actually living it believe it or not customer is the king today you have to give the customer what they are expecting out of you and how do we understand what they are expecting out of us digital marketing is the way out and that is how uh, the businesses they are becoming successful by adopting digital platforms and uh, you know digital marketing now let's talk about the strategies that company have companies have adopted in the covid times specifically now uh let me give you a small uh, case here okay it's a case so let this case comes from china who is the parent of coronavirus so uh what happened there is of course the pandemic was on and there are these uh, all of you might be aware of the brand nike nike shoes a uh, very very famous as far as uh, as far as it is concerned as a sports brand extremely famous among youngsters because it's kind of a style statement for many of them so when we talk about this particular brand nike so nike had uh, approximately 7000 physical stores across china so their 5000 stores were closed because of the pandemic situation and then uh, it it was quite a challenge for nike as to how to sell the shoes because um, when it comes to you know selling a product obviously the the uh, consumer has to feel the need of the product in order to buy that so it was quite a tricky situation for nike and uh, trust me when you have the will to to take over any situation to actually make any kind of adverse situation as successful it always happens they are very bright minds at work in these all big corporates so they have their own strategies in place now what nike did in this particular case is nike um obviously uh, everyone was sitting at home because of the lockdown so everyone was putting on weight the health was not that great and so on so what nike did is it started posting videos of online fitness so people can be at their home they can do exercise at home so that was their strategy and you know with that what happened with that people started buying more and more nike shoes because obviously to work out you need shoes if somebody is planning to do on the spot jogging or any kind of workout so you need shoes for that for uh, for supporting the heel for supporting your leg uh, that shoes uh, shoes are very much required so uh, that is how they started fueling the uh, you know the the sales of their own brand in the covid times when actually people were not stepping out at that point of time they made their shoes to sell so when we talk about uh, selling of the shoes see how easy it was for them right so it's just a small twist in the game and your company is again uh, quite uh, quite a lot i would say uh, profit making and to give you precise figures at that point of time in that particular quarter company made sales of 35% more than their offline sales isn't that great so uh, you know any business at any point of time may be any situation they have to be quite agile agile means they have to be flexible okay so uh, there is a agile strategy that companies follow today so we're not going to it just remember agile means they have to be flexible whatever might be the situation we should be able to go forward tackle the situation now let me give you one more example of this see everyone has resources it's not that the resources are less or else we can gather them also there's a company called lmvh lmvh is one of the world class perfume makers so world class perfume makers again 
perfumes were not to be used in this particular COVID times because people were not stepping out, right? So what could be done at that particular point of time? So a simple strategy here was perfumes. They have a lot of alcohol content into it. So the same alcohol content was used to produce hand sanitizers and LMVH instead of producing perfumes, using the same resources that they had. And of course, the, the amount of uh, you know, alcohol that they had for producing the perfumes, the same had gone in producing the hand sanitizers. So always remember in any kind of situation, may it be now here in the college or may it be later in your professional lives or may it be in your businesses that you are about to start and so on, you have the resources. Always remember, Whatever resources you have, start using them. They all are very useful. It's just that how you use it is more important, right? So uh, that, that is about uh, LMVH as a brand. Then um, to give you one more example that comes from the data part of it is uh, the Xiaomi company, MI, all of you are very much aware of. I'm sure in, in the classroom also, there are many of you who are using MI phones. So again, a China product. So they have fitness bands, MI. And MI fitness bands are produced by a company called Huami. So Huami is a company who has immense data of people. So data in this... Yeah, so uh, data in the sense, uh, we have um, people's um, heart rate, how much they walk, how much calories they have consumed and so on. So in, of course, the lockdown time, there were people not stepping out of their homes. So there was no walking, no physical much activity. So what they have done is they started using this particular data to give, uh, you know, one liner information about their health to people. So in case if the heart rate is high, so they asked them to go ahead and check their blood pressure or maybe, you know, check the, uh, get other checkups done and so on, right? So um, all of that. Uh, was kind of a business for Huami. And how did they go about it? Just because of the data that they had because of the fitness bands, right? So these are the different kinds of strategies that people have adopted during the COVID times. And not only that, these strategies have been extremely, extremely useful for those companies to make profits in the time when everything was so challenged. Now, where do we get started, first of all? So um, all, all my dear students here, it's very important today to be, on, to be on social media, to be online, to be there in the digital space. So uh, there are some people who say that, you know, I don't want to be on Facebook or I don't want to be using any of these platforms, but it is your online identity at the end of the day. So, how do we create that identity? How do we go about you know, creating our own identity as a brand? Uh, many of you, when you will go out for placements and so on, let me tell you one thing, that many of the companies these days, they check your online profiles quite th thoroughly before hiring you, right? So uh, there are a few tips and tricks that I will be sharing with all of you so that you all can brand yourself very well. Okay, so branding can be done very well. So um, first of all, it is important that we should have an account on the digital marketing platforms, on the social media platforms. They could be any of them. So you can talk of Instagram. Most of you are there on Instagram, I'm very sure. Or you might talk of Google, Google+, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Very, very important for all of you to have an account on LinkedIn and to keep it active as well. I'm going to come to it as to how you can uh, you know, make your profile quite interesting on LinkedIn. Then Pinterest, Twitter, these are all really very influential kind of platforms that all of us need to be on. So um, I will tell you one simple experiment that all of you can do right away. All of you, you, you can type my name, Sneha Ravindra Kanade in the Google uh, search bar. As you try searching for this name, there are odd 48 pages that will be generated. Now, these pages, as you will see, these are mostly the research papers that I have published or any content and blogs that I have written. 
so uh, there is you might find a blog on spirituality as well and so on or maybe you might might find uh, my instagram channel as well so uh, that is how you know you have to keep on posting good content okay now when i say good content it might be posted by you or it might be posted by somebody else on behalf of you or for you with your name like for example uh, suppose if we talk of a research paper so research paper of course um, it it is the research paper website that is going to publish and show my research paper i am not going to you know put it on my website i don't have a website of my own by the way it's very easy to create a website also right so um they are going to put it on their website and that is how you all of you will be able to see the different kinds of search results here now these search results as anybody would see definitely they will agree that this particular person is into research academic research and of course the profile etc is all going to flash now that is exactly what we call it as search engine optimization in digital marketing so um, having all these accounts keeping them active with the right kind of content is very important these days so always remember that when we talk of digital marketing there are two types of uh, there are two types of uh, you know uh, datas etc which are available one is when you proactively call people from the companies and you ask them to buy your products other one is when you have all these channels so very activated that people come to your page people come to your instagram channel people come to your website and they actually search for the products <coughs> they search for the products they search for what your company is into so this is called inbound marketing wherein you are trying to attract the customers because of the quality of the content that you have generated and that's precisely what we are going to do now students uh, if you can parallelly do it along with the session i am fine with it otherwise maybe after the session you can follow these particular steps first thing i want all of you to create your linkedin profiles now see when you create a linkedin profile it is one uh, digital marketing platform or digital platform wherein you interact with 3 uh, 300 380 million different professionals right so 380 million professionals are already there and you tend to connect with them there are many of the students you know who want to do their internship with microsoft and it is very much possible through linkedin because they keep on posting all these things on their linkedin accounts so um uh, all of you first thing as you would do during the session or maybe after the session as per the um, as per the dynamics that would work out create your linkedin profile if you don't have one if you have one first mistake that all of us do is we don't post our pictures on linkedin see um in the digital world you are not always face to face with people so it's your picture which is the first encounter on linkedin so please make sure you have a nice professional photograph that you can upload on linkedin and fill all your credentials on linkedin for sure any kind of certifications that you have done i'm sure many of you have done online certifications during covid as you were there at home and uh, many many different universities in, in fact harvard university was providing free certifications for people so i'm sure you all must have done lot of certification programs upload it on linkedin let the world know what you have done unless and until they know about it they are not going to understand what is your value because every time you cannot keep on talking about yourself that hey look i have done so much in my life that's not the right way as well so uh, what you can do is be on linkedin and keep posting all the accolades that you have done that you have achieved so far on this particular platform and don't forget to connect with people on linkedin we are not here we are not on linkedin as a social media platform we are here to connect with people right so different human resource professionals you can connect with you can connect with your dream company professionals and so on so um i i remember one of my student always wanted to be in want, wanted to get into amazon so the first thing that my student did was obviously you know get into the profile of linkedin and of course get in touch with the hr of amazon on linkedin you it is possible you can do that right 
Of course, colleges, they make their own effort for placements. But if you have any dream company that you're looking at, this is the right way how you need to use the digital marketing platform, right? Apart from it, um, Facebook, be very careful with this particular profile as you enter the employment, uh, you know, employment world. So there, this particular profile is going to looked at is to be looked at by many people. So make sure you have the right kind of content uploaded, good content uploaded. Um, in case if you have any photographs, etc., do also have a couple of professional photographs, your college photographs, and so on into it. Then, let me talk about one of the biggest, biggest um, platforms today, which is YouTube. YouTube is quite famous among among everybody, whether you are educated or not educated, doesn't matter because you have something called voice search on YouTube and so on other channels as well, like Google, etc. So you just say what you want to search and YouTube gives you that, right? And you only have to listen and see. So there's no literacy also required for YouTube. So this is one channel which is catching up very fast. So I would suggest have a YouTube channel of your own. It really works well. So at any point of time, if you have a presentation in class, I'm sure, especially the management graduates, it's a very common thing that we do. So if you have a presentation, etc., to be done in class, have your own YouTube channel and you can upload that presentation on your YouTube channel, right? If you are probably talking about some uh, very important thing, suppose you have researched on farmer's bill and you want to share that knowledge with your friends, do that. Recording a session doesn't take anything. Just log into a Zoom account, record your session, and that is good now, right? So all these things can be done and do prepare a good YouTube profile of your own. And uh, of course, you can share it with your friends, with your teachers, and so on. So we'll help you to get more views and likes and shares and subscribes on that. So help will always come from everybody in the college. So uh, this is another thing that all of you should look at, right? So uh, today, as we progress through the sessions, there are two things that you're going to do uh, without fail. Take it as an assignment. If you're able to do parallel with the session, I'm fine with it. So first is a LinkedIn account. And second is have your own YouTube channel wherein you can upload your content, right? Now, let me talk about uh, there's some very specific platforms that all of us are here for to know. And uh, apart from that, I'm going to give you a small case as well, and we will be solving that case together, right? Now, as you can see, uh, there are a couple of platforms that I've listed here, and uh, these are very specific ones that I've listed. I've not listed all of them, right? So I don't have a WhatsApp here. If you see, I don't have any other platforms here. So these are very specific business platforms that I've tried to use. Now, um, think about this situation. Let's take this case up. So your first case is, um, let's talk about a travel and tourism company. All right, so a travel and tourism company, um, you, you probably are an entrepreneur, you own it, and you're planning to you know, get um, some people to fly to different parts of the world for vacations or whatnot, things and so on. So um, this travel and tourism company, if you have to post any kind of you know, um, information about your company or you know, any, any wonderful travel packages that your company is offering and so on, so what would be the right platform? Give it a thought. You have many platforms which are listed out here. You have Facebook, you have Insta, you have Twitter, and you have LinkedIn. So there are many types of platforms which are posted out here. So which platform is going to be more appropriate for this kind of um, company? So probably if I had to give you an answer, there are two platforms which will be most used here, which is Facebook and Instagram. Now question in your mind must be, why can't I use LinkedIn here? Always remember, for B2C kind of businesses, use the social media platforms like Facebook and Insta. And Twitter as well you can use. However, for B2B kind of businesses, business to business, all of you know, right? B2B kind of businesses. So for B2B kind of businesses, it is going to be Twitter and LinkedIn, which will be quite important. Now, LinkedIn is a place where all the, all the uh, you know, professionals, they exist. Almost all the professionals these days, they have their account on LinkedIn. 
So most of the professionals, they exist on LinkedIn. So it makes sense to have uh, an account on LinkedIn here, right? When we are talking about B2B kind of businesses. Suppose if I'm a steel company, I'm selling steel. I have no business with Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to have my page on LinkedIn so that if there is any company who is into you know, any of the steel products or they want steel, they should get in touch with our company and so on, right? So LinkedIn is one kind of, uh, you know, social media platform which has to be used for B2B kind of businesses. Now, um, going further into this, as you can see, there are these two very specific kind of, um, you know, names that, uh, that have been listed here, which is HubSpot and Sprout Social. So HubSpot and Sprout Social are the digital marketing, I would say, um, kind of platforms again, but they help you to um, increase the traffic on your website. Like for example, uh, suppose uh, you are a digital marketing professional and uh, you are working for a company wherein it's a B2C company. Say you're working for Hindustan Unilever in the digital marketing section. So digital marketing section means you are going to um, handle all the social media accounts as well. So HubSpot or Sprout Social as, as uh, you know, the facilitation channels for your digital marketing, what they're going to tell you is, suppose if you uh, release a particular, say, poster or a video somewhere in the mid-morning, say 11 o'clock, then you, you release one more poster or video of a product around evening, 7.30, 8-ish, that kind of time. And uh, again, you release one more video of your Hindustan Unilever, one more product at about 11. As we see all the three of them, Sprout Social is going to show you nice, it is going to have a nice data visualization. Now, just for all of y'all's information, uh, data visualization can be done through a tool called Tableau, okay? Tableau is a tool that we use for data visualization. Now, uh, data visualization is when, uh, you know, you post anything online, how many people have viewed it? Have people clicked on it? Did people uh, have any sales or did they buy anything through that particular platform? It can be seen very easily through Sprout, Sprout Social or HubSpot. So both of these platforms, they are paid. They see these are businesses. They are not going to be always for free. So they are obviously paid and um, uh, they, they are going to charge minimal, of course, as, as, um, as uh, you know, uh, there are different kinds of posts, etc. that you post and then you see the different kind of graphs coming. In. Now, how do these graphs look like? Now, we have seen three timings of these different posts. And then uh, there, are, there are these three timings, right? Morning, say mid-morning, 10, 11, and you have around um, 8 o'clock and then you have around 11 o'clock in the evening. So all of these, basically, uh, so you would um, see that how has been the response of the customers at that particular time. So did they see the post and buy more in the morning, in the evening, at the night, and so on? So this will help you to release the right kind of content at right point of time. So if suppose any customer is buying any particular product at suppose say night 11, more at night 11, when people are free and they are you know watching maybe television or checking out their social media accounts at the end of the day and so on. So all that information will be given by Sprout Social and HubSpot. So based on that, you can actually time also as to what post can go at what point of time from the companies. Now, let me tell you how companies operate. See, uh, there is a certain requirement of social media marketing uh, when it comes to all these posts that are being posted and so on. So I'm going to give you a real-time company scenario as to how all of these work. So say if I talk about Facebook, at least five posts a day I repeat, five posts a day from your company with certain content, audio visuals, they will be fantastic. Instagram, at least three posts a day in, in those particular channels. I would suggest all of you to uh, subscribe to this Instagram channel, which is Mad Over Marketing. It's a very good channel and it shows, you know, very unique ideas that people across the world have used for marketing, right? So uh, the, the channel is Mad Over Marketing. You can, use, you can uh, subscribe to it 
it's really nice and uh, you will actually get to see how different ideas have been explored and as you um, you know subscribe this channel you will be able to see that how different posts have been posted by the people and uh, you will see that mostly the posts that go into maybe facebook or sprout uh, or say instagram for that matter all of those are either visuals or audio visuals content is not something people would like to read right if i give you one page document to read some of you might be lethargic what to read and all that right but at the same time if i give you a small video of 5 minutes i'm sure all of you will be interested to hear and see the video uh, as uh, about the same content right so same goes for facebook and instagram as well so always remember as you work in the digital marketing domain it is the visuals and the audio visuals which are doing wonders right so uh, and the frequency has to be more on this on the contrary twitter so twitter is something uh, which is far more professional than both of these so all of us know that twitter has got a certain word limit right all of you know about that it has got certain word limit now this word limit is approximately 1 140 words so which means you have to have very short messages here not very long messages so when you are writing the content obviously um, it is something that people might just see it on the go and so on so make the content as content as crisp as possible as meaningful as possible and again multiple times you have to upload uh, this particular uh, you know the post that you are doing so you need somebody who is really good at creating content linkedin on the other hand it is more of an organizational or b2b kind of tool that we use now when i say b2b it is business to business so not many posts are required here maybe once a week or twice a week is more than enough so do you see the difference between b2b and b2c how they operate so facebook you have to be very continuous in uploading your uh, content and audio visuals but on the other hand linkedin you might, you might as well do it for maybe once or twice right so uh, remember sprout social hubspot uh, you can go ahead you can google them uh, you can see the various services that how hubspot uh, provides and so sprout social as well and uh, that will give you an idea of what you could do as a digital marketing manager now that's precisely next what we are coming to you've heard a lot about it now you know exactly what companies do as digital marketing uh, you know departments but uh, in case if you take up that as your career what your day is going to look like okay now um well let me uh, walk you through a complete day in the life of a digital marketing manager because most of you uh, you might have heard that it's a very promising career and so on and you would like to take take up the same as your career so uh, let's see how how the day looks like in the life of a digital marketing manager so a digital marketing manager might typically start the work by 8:30 9 o'clock coming to the office So what they do first is check the mails. Anything, any post from the prior day has it backfired? It's very important that any post or any content that backfires during, ah, uh, you know, the the evening or night time when you're sleeping, that has to be tackled first. You all remember the case of Maggie, right? So with the lead content. uh so uh, in the case of maggie all of us know what happened so there was huge lead content and the problem here with maggie was that they did not reciprocate at the right point of time they took 2 3 days for the results to come and so on but social media one second is like one year on social media so every second counts here so as soon as there are any kind of discrepancies on social media it has to be addressed immediately so that's what you do when you enter the office when you're there you switch on your computer and you see that any post or any kind of content from the last day which has been backfired so first thing is you either somehow tackle the backfired content or you either remove it or whatever is the best strategy at that point of time let me give you an example um this this is an example from 2016 specifically four year back four years back uh yes 2016 so at that point of time there are many of them they come from different states uh, we are situated here in bangalore so there are many people from different states who come here and they to pursue their education and so on so there was one of my student who had come 
to uh, pursue his education he was from north india and uh, he he had booked a cab to come to the college so college was actually 5 kilometers away but uh, the cab driver took him round and round the city to increase the bill of course and then it was his bill was about more than 500 and when he saw the distance he was amazed so what he did is the the screenshot of ola he had put on his facebook account and trust me students keep this in mind always any positive content will take lot of time to go viral but negative content it will go viral very 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 fast it will spread like wildfire so this particular content it started spreading like wildfire absolutely and uh, he got a call from ola and he was offered ola money worth of his 5000 to withdraw just the post now he was very agitated with the kind of thing that was going around uh you know where people and customers are cheated and so on so he he did not opt for 5000 rupees ola money he in, in in on the contrary he actually kept post as it is and he said let everyone know what your company is doing and what the drivers are doing and let them be careful let them see the google maps and have an idea what is the distance and so on after that he, the concept of google maps in ola was actually introduced so either you give a solution to anything that backfires or you somehow try to you know uh, close that particular content that has backfired so that is going to be the first job apart from it later in the day you are going to meet your content creation team so content creation team either you might be a part of it or you might not be a part of it it's not necessary that you might be a content creator because there are a lot of different kinds of uh, technologies that go into these days so you have multimedia here so you need to have sound knowledge of so many multimedia platforms uh, apart from it uh, you you have to have good writing skills as well for creating content and deeper knowledge of product service obviously that goes into it so um all of that you will sit around you will sit with your team and you will try to have a, a road map prepared as to what kind of content has to be released and what kind of content is required in the market now what kind of content is required and most liked by people the answer will be given by sprout social and hubspot as you see the trends there right so what kind of content people like to see right is it only pictures audio visuals and so on so you can see it so that is going to be your next task next is so this is going to be the content analysis part next what you do as a part of digital marketing profile is utility analysis so any content that you have posted throughout the day or yesterday for that matter what has been the utility of that content so you actually monitor this into different kind of time at uh, time slots so maybe on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis and based on that how much the sales have increased for your particular product so that that is again uh, 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 i would say uh, a job of digital marketing manager as to how the sales have increased over a period of time so that is again one thing you will be doing so first of all you will be doing the fire fighting first thing in the morning as digital marketing manager second is content analysis utility analysis and third thing that you do is the cost benefit analysis so you have so many people working for you multimedia team content creation team and so on all of these are paid their salaries right they all have their uh, there's money paid to them through by the company so of, of course cost benefit analysis you uh, and all of you know that youtube it will permit you to upload video only for some time for certain uh, minutes if you want to upload say one hour two hour video you have to take permission from youtube you need to pay to them so um that is how it actually works so uh, maybe you will have to see that how much cost has gone into making that content and is it really benefiting or not so cost benefit analysis is the third thing that you do so there are four main jobs of a digital marketing manager that you'll end up doing first is you will be doing uh, you know the content analysis fire fighting utility analysis and cost benefit analysis as part of digital marketing profile so uh, this was about what a day in in the life of digital marketing manager looks like so uh, we will be coming almost to the end of the session i'll be taking 5 minutes more um so i wanted to talk to all of you about cyber security here 
Uh, see, uh, there have been quite a lot of incidences of cybersecurity, and I would say any digital marketing discussion that we are having today, uh, it, it is incomplete without understanding how can we keep ourselves or our accounts, our money, our identity, our privacy safe in the digital world, right? So I'll be just uh, uh, giving you some tips and tricks for the next five minutes, and then we will call it a day. So uh, talking about, you know, the privacy bit of it. So uh, recently, uh, I would like to share an experience here. One of my colleagues uh, in the college, so uh, they, uh, his, his wife received an OTP for a transaction and she was trying to do a transaction basically. And trust me, when you are on social media, when you are on online platforms, you are being watched by God knows how many people. The entire world can watch you actually what you're doing, right? So it is important for all of you to be extremely careful when you are present on the social media platform. So uh, the lady was trying to do a transaction, uh, uh, you know, the faculty member's wife, and then she receives a call and then she was asked for OTP and she gave the OTP to that person. Now you might be thinking, oh, we all know, you know, OTP is not to be given and so on. She was a very, she's a very educated lady. She is a professor herself in a polytechnic college, but then she gave the OTP. Now, how did this happen? So when uh, she was asked that, you know that OTP is not to be shared with anybody, then why did you share the OTP? She said that the voice was kind of, you know, um, mesmerizing. The voice was kind of, you know, uh, like, um, you know, typically, when you put somebody into hypnosis, that kind of voice, and she could not actually um, think anything at that point of time, and she gave the OTP right away. Now, we all know that OTP is not to be given, but uh, remember that these kinds of incidences are also taking place wherein people with certain special skills of hypnotism and so on, they're using it to get the OTP from the people. Secondly, um, one more incident that I would like to share. And of course, I will give you the remedies also for it. I'm not scaring you guys off, but I'll give you the remedies also for the same. Uh, one fine day, there, there was a young girl who received, uh, you know, uh, the, when you guys start working uh, early, early part of your career and so on. So you receive your, um, you know, the payment to check um, on the first of every month. So she also had received her salary and then um, her account was linked with Paytm. So there was one call which uh, came to her and uh, she was told that, uh, you know, uh, we, we are upgrading the app. So there's a small app which is present. You please uh, download that and that will help you to uh, run Paytm in a much efficient way. And it's a security app. By the way, it was told that it is a security app. She downloaded that particular app but you know what that app was? That app was uh, like TeamViewer, which gives you remote access to any of the screen. So whatever she was doing on the screen was all seen by somebody else as that app was downloaded. Now this particular app, when it was, um, then she was typing in her passwords. She was typing in the code for, uh, you know, the uh, pay, Google Pay and etc. all those, you know, we have those code, right? The four, four words code. She's typing all of that. People were able to see it. And uh, as a result of that, what happened is her entire money was taken off from her account. So as good as digital media looks like, uh, it also has a little darker side to it, but it can be tackled very easily. So uh, here are some tips that you can keep your account safe. So uh, this, please share it with your parents, uh, with your um, elder brothers, sisters, who are into online transactions. First of all, uh, do not download any app as security app uh, at any point of time. All right, so um, that is first thing. Secondly, do not entertain calls from somebody that you don't know unless and until it is from a bank or so on, because uh, this hypnotism is quite on uh, increase these days. Third thing, and very important, when you are framing your passwords, don't frame them by your name, your family name, your date of birth, because that is quite obvious and known to everybody. Don't frame it by those. You can keep some 
very uh, you know uh, kind of words can be used which are not uh, at all expected uh, to be used like for example uh, say uh, water bottle something like that you know something that no one will be able to use uh, understand it it could be part of your password so use such kind of simplistic and weird words third thing always have a special character and numbers as part of your password that makes it very difficult to hack one more aspect is see we have multiple accounts all of us like you all of you have your zoom accounts you have uh, facebook and twitter and all those kinds of accounts i'm sure many of you have uh, accounts on swayam um, different kind of mook uh, websites as well now when you are when you have all of these uh, websites and the accounts so um, have two types of passwords one that you use it for your um, money transaction purposes so that are little complicated and the other one is of course that you use it for all of these platforms right like uh, maybe swayam course or maybe any kind of uh, such kind of you know online learning platforms you don't need very high end password for that even if someone hacks into it what what will will they do with your uh, with your kind of uh, online learning that is going on but for banks etc do have passwords which as i've told you little weird uh, those who are uh, you know not anticipated by anybody and secondly uh, those who have special characters and numbers also so all of those can be used so um, on that note uh, thank you very much for listening to me patiently uh, so i've just given you a glimpse of digital marketing how it looks like uh, there are many many wonderful things to it which is search engine optimization marketing uh, we can look into specific social media marketing we can look into web analytics so a lot of things uh, that we can explore more so as a career excellent absolutely uh so only thing i would say a skill that you all have to uh you know have is you all have to be tech savvy be as tech savvy as possible right that is going to help you to uh to get into digital marketing very easily all right so everybody uh on that note thank you all um so ma'am sir in case uh, if you want to add anything or if there is any student who has questions um i would be happy to answer that madam thank you very much madam is wonderful session madam a few uh, few students they wanted to ask questions madam yes sir yes madam you mention your name and ask very good morning ma'am good morning Ma'am, I am Pravin, ma'am. Yes, yes, Pravin. Tell me. Ma'am, mobile marketing is hardest career in nowadays, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I am through mobile marketing, ma'am, through WhatsApp business. Okay. Nowadays, so many sellers, cheat sellers, and third-party sellers in Facebook and Instagram, ma'am. Mm hmm. Uh, with that, so so many customers are not trusting Facebook marketing and Instagram marketing. Mm hmm. Uh, so, how we create awareness in social media, Facebook or Instagram? Uh, how we advertisement? How we promote? Yeah, a very good question, Praveen. Uh, it happened with me also once. Um, so I'll share my experience as well. There was a very nice, you know, uh, ad about uh, uh, very very nice uh, dresses, etc. So I happened to buy one. for some 300 400 rupees but it never came to me it was a fake website on facebook so how how can we tackle that always remember uh, whatever ad we are posting on facebook it has to be backed by a good website right so when it is backed by a good website so obviously you give the website link and you uh, and you have people to uh, you know click on that and take you to the website second important thing is uh um, the website where i was cheated specifically there were no contact details on it right so it's important that you give that assurance to your customers that in case if anything goes wrong you can always get in touch with us on this particular website or this particular uh, number or email id you have to give them some kind of uh, contact details right so first thing uh, first thing that should ring an alarm in your head is when you don't have contact details 
even on the website, which was precisely not there on the website that I had seen. But since the transaction was for lesser amount and the product looked quite promising, I still went ahead for it. But then it was a total cheat. It was a cheat website, actually. So keep that one thing in mind. Apart from it, uh, as you scroll down the website, you will see a small symbol, C, copyright. So if you have a copyright name, uh, then obviously the website is fine and you can go ahead and shop on it. So um, I would suggest it's great to have marketing done on Instagram, Facebook, and so on. But obviously as a customer, when you go ahead and shop on these, uh, do verify it with a good website. So uh, I hope Praveen, I've answered your question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. This is Anusha from First MBA. Yes, Anusha. Ma'am, uh, uh, I want to know about how to be more unique in LinkedIn profile content. I'm sorry, how to be more unique in? LinkedIn profile content. LinkedIn profile content, of course. So in case if you want to be more unique and you want to be more visible on uh, LinkedIn, so one thing is you have to keep on updating your skills. Okay, because it's a professional network. People would want to see a very bright, brighter side of you as a professional, right? So uh, maybe you can, you anything that you do, if you do maybe a short-term course or something, make sure you upload the certificate on LinkedIn and let people see that how nicely you're utilizing your time, right? So as of now, as a student, that is primarily that some would, something people would look at. Secondly, uh, you can always create post of your own. If you explore LinkedIn more, there are, uh, you know, platforms wherein you can, you can write your own articles, your experience as a student. Maybe you can pen down your experience with online learning. How is it different uh, from classroom learning and so on? All of that can be done. So when you actually keep posting good and unique content, that's what is going to make your profile more unique. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, ma'am, I have another question. Yes. How to attract customers in Instagram or Facebook business? How to attract them? Yes. So um, Instagram and Facebook, um, as we see here, a very important uh, kind of, I would say, strategy is use the right hashtags, right? So using of the right hashtags is going to help you to get more and more customers. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I have an Instagram channel. Uh, wherein, uh, you know, during lockdown, I explored a lot of kinds of foods and you know, prepared them in a healthy way and so on. So um, my experience is when we try to put any post and there are very specific words that people use, say vegan, vegan, uh, you know, right? Vegan foods, wherein uh, the foods which are not from animal source. So vegan, uh, this particular word attracts people from all over the world, especially Europe and US. All right, so they, those trend buzzing words, if you could use, that is really bang on. Second is uh, always look at audio or, uh, sorry, not audio, visuals or audio visual content. So uh, something which is pleasing to the eyes, you know, when you, uh, like for example, if I have prepared uh, any kind of dish, which I have uh, done in my uh, channel as well. So you have to plate it out nicely. The plating has to be really beautiful so that people see it and uh, it, it looks really tempting for eating. Apart from it, it ha there have to be some kind of audio visuals, a short kind of video that's very engaging, right? So, and uh, obviously have more frequency of this during the day. So uh, keep it alive. As I've told you, social media marketing is more like a marathon. You have to keep running. It's not like, you know, one day you post five content and second day there's nothing. It doesn't happen like that. And if you start with a channel of your own, at least give it 2.5 years and you will start getting income from that. If you want to do it fast, then obviously there are digital marketing agencies who do the wonders, but it might take about two years with very normal course of uh, you know, anything that you start. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.
Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Prashant. Yes, Prashant. I want to ask about: Is it required digital marketing for programming languages or not? Programming language, if you know it, it's technical great. Knowledge. Technical knowledge. Ah, uh, it's actually not required uh, to know a programming language, but. Uh, in case if you go uh, to the data analytics side, like uh, there are certain softwares like R, etc., which are used. So there, the kind of coding you do is more like programming language, but that can be learned. There, there's no uh, special requirement to learn a programming language. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Madam, thank you very much, Madam. Wonderful thank session. You. Uh, you are clear the doubt. Very, very, very interesting, Madam. You hope all the people they got it good information from my digital marketing, Madam. Madam, thank Bala, you, sir. Madam. Thank yes, Madam. Principal and Dean, Madam. Bala Koteshwar, Madam. Madam. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh... Uh, thank you so much, Neha. It was an amazing session uh, to get uh, to provide insights to the students. Uh, they are introduced to the market specializations this semester. So this platform especially has given them a knowledge on what is digital marketing. And you have shared uh, so many examples, actually, uh, real-time examples, which uh, as, uh, as users, as customers and consumers, how we deal with the issues. So, so uh, I hope all this experience uh, will give them a very good learning experience. I think uh, uh, they have had a wonderful time uh, as a learning uh, platform uh, today. And uh, I'm happy that many students were inquisitive to know about things, knowing more about it, uh, because all of us are tech savvy and uh, inevitably on social media now. So the more we are into it, the more we learn, the more we get benefit out of it. So uh, I'm very happy that you have accepted our request and uh, you have agreed to talk to our students, Neha. Uh, I'm uh, Thank you on, so behalf much, of, on behalf of Sanskriti group and uh, HOD and the students first uh, semester as well as third semester. Uh, uh, I, I really thank you from uh, bottom of our heart and uh, uh, I really, really thank you. Grateful for your uh, uh, help in coming uh, and talking or virtually being with the students. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Sneha. Thank you, ma'am. The pleasure is all mine. It was so great to connect with all these young minds. And uh, it feels even though better when they have questions. So uh, when they have questions, we are quite, uh, you know, uh, satisfied that, okay, they, they have heard us to some extent. <laughs> That's nice, sir. Neha. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. And Thank you. We'll conclude here. Thank you. We'll conclude here. Thank you. Thank you.